Okay, what's up, guys? So this is TK, uh, back again, and I'm here with... Uh, I'm Tyler, owner of the Hong Kong Honch Crows. And I'm Jay, owner of the Philadelphia for Alligators. And uh, we're actually here to do a mid-season um, like team breakdown power rankings kind of thing. And um, we're just going to go through each of our individual power rankings, uh, how we how we really view some of the teams, how how some of the coaches, how some of the teams are doing themselves this this season. And um, we we would we actually did want uh, Paul to actually do this kind of thing each week, uh, but he just hasn't had the time for it. So we'll probably do do one for the middle of the season. We'll probably do one for the end of the season. Probably finish off the playoffs and maybe do one then. Who knows? Um, but you guys want to start heading in just just right get in rid of those teams we'll start uh, yeah we'll start bottom with to the top uh, yeah we'll start 10 to 8 um yeah. so uh tk do you want to start off what who you think your 10 would be yeah sure so um i actually have sin here and i i think you guys probably do too yeah um, definitely yeah so i i have sin at number 10 with uh the middletown um middletown Mill tanks. Uh, mill tanks, right? Yep. Yeah. So I, I got Sin at ten. Uh, while his team is super threatening, he actually did a really, really good job drafting his team. Um, looking at it like closer, there there's a lot of ground weaknesses on his team, and in the draft format, uh, th- that's something that just gets taken advantage of. And like, not to put it against him, he just doesn't have the experience playing through like this kind of format. I know he ha- has played like the games themselves before. Uh, but he hasn't really, like, done like a competitive kind of yeah, battle thing. Just brand so new he to just competitive, yeah, which is a whole. He, he just doesn't have that monster. experience. Yeah, he he just doesn't have the experience for it. So, um, the, if he gets the hang of it, you could de- I could definitely see him moving up in the rankings, especially towards like the end of the weeks. Maybe knock some people out of like playoff contention or anything, especially since he is in that Sun Conference, which I'm sure we'll go over later. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, because, like, the last battles of his season are Kamisa, Tyler, then me. So, like, if he sneaks in a win against either one of those, he That's... could seriously mess up playoff rankings. Yeah, that that would be a major difference since we're all 4-1 and one right now, and it's just a really close battle for the top spot in the, the Sun Conference at the moment. Yeah. So I, I have actually been working with him, like, a few of these weeks, helping him trying to team build if I can, trying to at least get him team building properly. Um, and uh, and I, I just want to reflect on that real quick. His team building, you can see, it's really improved. I mean, yeah. his, his play, I mean, despite the fact that he's 0-5, I mean, we could talk about that, but it's pretty obvious that he's at the bottom here, but I still think that he's come a long way since the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see that, too. Hmm. He's not getting, like, 6-0'd every week. He did get 6-0'd this past week, though, right? Um, yeah. But, but like, it, it, t- like, it takes, it's hard to 6-0 him now. And like it's he, not he has definitely he just set up one mon and then just sweep through the team. Yeah, like he, he's definitely improved, and you see he's not bringing the same mons every week, which is very good. Um, and uh, he's making custom sets, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit later too with a certain player, uh, with not like customizing their sets for for specific teams or anything. Mm. Uh, so is there is there anything else you guys want to say about that? Um, um his um. What was it? I believe it was week two. His loss to Ricky, which was a 6-0 with the uh, power-up punch Swampert. That was kind of sneaky from Ricky, but it was just also just uh, bad on him not to switch out of that. And, he, you know, he got the power-up punches. And I think that's our fastest win so far this season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. How many yeah, times uh, did that take? Cause... I think oh, it was no, no. like... It's... 11, um, t- right? Tyler, you might have him beat, but it doesn't matter. My yeah. point was, is, that's his turning point, and I think from then on, he's improved a lot as a player. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That definitely taught him a lesson. Because I think, I think, what even though it was like a pretty fair loss, I think his loss to Kamisa actually showed just the drastic improvement from that week to that week. Yeah, because Kamisa three owed him, right? I think so. Yeah, and like there was, he did some pretty ballsy plays, but. <laughs> Uh, like that that was like the team where he started like bringing different different mons and he really seemed like he prepped a bit more a bit better that week yeah definitely so other than that there's not really much to say for sin yeah since we right, so uh unanimously i think 
Um, I might be mistaken in this, but I think unanimously we can say we next have Matt at ninth. Uh, yeah, only, I only have Ricky. Oh, Ricky? you have Ricky. I have Ricky. Uh, so Jay, you and me can go over Matt, and yeah. uh, we'll 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 say why it's we put him at first. eight, and then Tyler, you can just say why you actually have him above Ricky. Yeah, we'll do. All right, so, so Jay, you want to start off? Yeah, yeah. So my my point here about Matt is he's, and I think Tyler's going to reinforce his point in a minute, but. He's very predictable in uh, just the way that he plays the game. It's um, nothing personal, but it's pretty obvious to build against him, and a lot of uh, playing in a showdown league in a draft format like this is prep work, and week to week he has virtually no prep work. It's not as if he doesn't you know, put his mons in a team and figure out what he's playing against, but he doesn't customize them in order to face new threats, which is just, you know, you're going to get slaughtered in this draft format doing that. Yeah. And his 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 play is uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, he uh, usually sends out his rock setter first every single time, and you know if he doesn't get rocks up, then he just kind of loses from there. If he does, it's usually a pretty competitive match from there on out. And it is important to get rocks up, but when you're playing with that kind of predictability, it's it's easy to win against you no matter yeah. what. Like in the last week, it was Jay versus Matt, and uh, in prep we noticed that he threw out his Jirachi first every single match to throw up rocks. Every so Jay just threw out a choice specs, uh, a choice specs uh, Gengar, Gengar and Shadow Ball, Shadow Ball. <laughs> yeah, and that was and basically like, the end of that. I think the key problem was is he actually builds like his Mons towards the beginning of the season, then he doesn't change them. Well, right. So so Gengar's Shadow Ball in that example doesn't one shot Jirachi if Jirachi's building any kind of uh, hybrid defensive set, but Jirachi, the mat that the Jirachi that Matt runs is always defensive. So yeah. I knew that I could one-shot it, and I mean, luckily I was right and everything, but going into that, knowing that, it gives you a boost of confidence, too. Yeah. I think a problem, too, that really lies with Matt is just, like, the way he built his team, where everything is kind of just... It's forced to be one-dimensional. Like, like looking at his team, he doesn't really have, like, defensive threats besides, like, making Jirachi being forced to be defensive. Yeah. Or, like, like he, he, he doesn't have the Mons that can do a bunch of different stuff. Like, yeah, his Mimikyu all, like, is gonna be a Sword Stance setup sweeper, yeah. His Mimikyu is gonna be a Sword Stance setup sweeper. Um, his Scolipede, if it comes, it's it's gonna be a speed boosting wall breaker set. Uh, the his Mantine is defensive. The, I haven't seen him run anything where it's just like, oh, that that was kind of cool, or oh, that had an answer for it. It's like it almost looks like he has like the basic showdown sets for each of his mods, yeah. And like that, and that's what it is. Like even like I'm looking at it right now. His his week one, his only win was actually against Sin in week one. It was only a three zero. Um, and. Uh, like I don't know, like that was even before Sin was even like understanding anything. I'd, I'd almost even want to see that battle again, like at the end of the season. Yeah, to see if Sin would overtake Matt. Yeah, it's it's like minus that battle. If you if you take that out, Matt Matt's at, um Matt Matt's zero and four with without a win against the player who we all agreed is uh, right now the worst player in the league. Right, which to me is why, at least personally, I mean, Tyler, you might, I want to know your reasons that you disagree with this, but first I just want to say, that's why he's ninth for me. His only win is against the person that is clearly 10th. Yeah, and it was only a 3-0, too. Right. Yeah, but that's also the same for Ricky. Yeah, but Ricky at least got that 6-0 with him. And, like, at least Ricky ran a little clever sets with, like, that Swampert set. I I don't think Ricky's, Ricky is 7th for me, if we just, I don't know if, Matt, do you want to talk more about Matt, Tyler? Yeah, Uh, so we'll, um, I think I'm all set with Matt. If Tyler, you want to mention why you actually have him yeah. above Ricky? Uh, I'm also taking like just draft strength, like team strength mm-hmm. specifically into account here. Ricky's draft is kind of all over the place. I don't really see much potential with that team because his initial U picks are fine. Rodom Wash, he doesn't know how to run Rodom Wash. No. La- last season I ran Rodom Wash and it it ran the house pretty well. This year it hasn't really done anything. His Mew is almost always a defensive rock setter. His Salamence is basically always yeah. a D-dance yeah, set. And, and that is a huge problem with a Mew. When you have a Mew where it can literally be anything, if it's locked into a specific role, yeah. that's never a good thing. 
Because Infernape is almost every time a choice band or life orb. It's never like a mixed set. It's never a nasty plot surprise set. And then after Clefable, you, it just kind of goes downhill. Because like Clefable's okay, but with the amount of like Steel Mons and Poison Mons that it, like were introduced and have gotten better in this season. Well, he, I think the problem is Clefable's really, really good, especially with like Unaware and um, and but, Magic Guard. But he hasn't utilized like his Clefable at all that's, this season. That's why. I don't even know he's if he's brought running, it to a match. He has. He ran it against me. He brought out a toxic orbed uh, magic guard Clefable, but he threw it into my Magirna, which is steel, so it's not like he can flag it into it. So it's mm -hmm. just like it shows a clear like lack of game knowledge. Because it's yeah. also the same thing that he didn't know about like general sets on Magirna, like one of the more famous sets on Magirna, which is shift gear. Yeah. Which just on that point, I will. I will totally agree. I, I think he definitely has the worst just team at face value, but I think that in terms of we were talking about earlier, uh, he has a lot less predictability than Matt, and I think that you know the, the mill tanks are going to suffer from that. See, I think his team could be considered better than Matt's just because it's not one dimensional as a team, and like I think the middle picks Matt did a lot better with, but I think like the upper OU picks. And those bottom picks by Ricky are at least like like having like that Drapion in there, and um, just being able to have like the Mew. Like, yeah, I, I think those with the are pick, he hasn't really done. Give him the options. It. Yeah, I, he, he has I the options. See but him he hasn't be able to utilize it. his months. Yeah, exactly. Which, which, is, which is why I'm putting him below Matt because he has the options. Yeah, I guess that with, does make with sense. With Mew, so. and he's not being able to use it. He has the options for like mixed Infernape, and he's not using it, and he's still oh, and he's still one and four. Yeah, it does so his pain team me has a lot so much to see the Infernape than Matt. Because the Infernape is my second favorite Mon, like, ever. And just watching it, like, get yeah. bodied each week kind of kind of makes me sad. But... So with his surprise sets, he has a lot more higher potential for a surprise set to throw people off. And he's still mm -hmm. doing marginally better than Matt, who has a very yeah. one-dimensional and predictable team. So that's why I put mm -hmm. Ricky below. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess that would lead into talking about Ricky then. I actually have him at 8, like one above Matt, but Jay, you said you have him at 7? I I think I meant to say 8. I'm sorry. 8, okay. This yeah, so, so our, our bottom three are the same then. With uh, I have Ricky, I pretty much said why I have Ricky above Matt, um, where his team has that option to do more. So I put him above, I think, just because his drafts went a bit better than in, in my opinion, and he did he, he has shown glimpses of being able to build like those really good sets like his power up punch swampert and uh what was it week two i believe yeah so, yeah. yeah in week two um and it, he has some of those mons that are threatening like that salamence and infernape which I, I feel like when you look at matt's team when you're just building i i like to think of power rankings as when you're building against them how scared of you are are you of their team? And I feel like when I look at Ricky's team for team building, I, I'm just more scared of Ricky's team than I am of Matt's. Like I don't yeah. I don't see those mons on Matt's team that really make me terrified to build against it. Yeah, but that's because it, you coming from a more experienced player. If Matt were to yeah. face Ricky, I would think Matt would win. Ooh. Yeah. See that I don't know. See, well, that, that's why that's why uh, that's why we're split our, here. Our damn think, commissioner yeah. should uh, build better schedules then. <laughs> <laughs> Get those matchups in there. I did just really want to sneak this in. Last point about uh, Ricky here. Um, I the 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 main reason I think I can say that I have him at um at at as what did I say eight? Yeah, eight. Um, his his match against Kamisa. Okay, so Kamisa. We can talk about this later, but Kamisa has been doing a lot better recently. But in the middle of all this, you know, Kamisa steamrolling through the league with his amazing team and his awesome Keldeo and all these things are going on, and then he has this very unimpressive 2-0 victory over Ricky in which Ricky yeah. very much holds his own against one of the better players in the league. Yeah, yeah. I would say I, that I, that I was that too. more of a great misplay on Kamisa's part rather than the Ricky part. Then Ricky so you, better. So you're saying that it's not so much... Can you Ricky clarify what is... happened in that match again? So what happened in that match was he had Volker on a setup with, I believe, a two-quiver dance on a Mew. And he was pretty low health. He had like 19% left. 
Yeah. And he had Giga Drain, Bug Buzz, and I believe Fiery Dance. Instead of Giga Drain to gain health back, he just kept trying to, like, Fiery Dance or Bug Buzz to try to do damage rather than get it stabilized since it's already got such a good phys uh, special bulk. And so what yeah, happened he went was the sweep instead of the... he yeah, swapped yeah. out... Uh, Ricky swapped into his um, Hitmontop, and he faked it out and it died because he didn't use the Giga Drain initially. Yeah. Had he used the Giga Drain, it would have one-shot the... Uh, it would have one-shot the Mew, and then he would have been near full health, and then he would have swept huh. the team from there. Yeah. So that was, I, I, that was I just also, a mistake I also on do Kinesis think... part. Ricky shows a bit good team building there too, where he did bring all those prior moves. Yeah, he um, brought two. I think I believe he brought the fake out on both. He brought hit on fake top out on and both and Infernape. But I feel like his mistake that match was bringing Life Orb on Infernape. Yeah. Um, I, personally, I I'm never a fan of Life Orb in draft format because you don't want to deal with your mons getting chipped like that constantly. Um, like I'm I'm much more pro to putting on like a plate or if you have the coverage like an expert belt or something like that especially on like an infernape that has all that coverage options you should be able to just put an e-belt on there and not take that chip because i'm pretty sure that chip on the infernape ended up costing him that match too right yeah. uh where he, where he where camisa actually kept whittling it down with its own life orb yeah he uh he swapped in twice to fake out which does Super minimal damage, even for the flinch, which is great utility, of course. But I mean, super minimal damage. We're talking here for that ten percent or nine percent health loss. It's it's really not worth it. Yeah, yeah. So so, the, I think I think that's pretty much all we got to say about Ricky, right? Yeah. So yeah. so well now we can actually get into. Seven like years. I think this is probably where we'll have a lot of debate in this rankings. So we we have a uh, seven through what four. Uh, yes, we have seven through four. Yeah, so, uh, Tyler, you want to lead this one off then? Hey, yeah, for number seven spot, I put John, owner of the uh, Clinton Kabutops. Um, f for my reasons why, he didn't bring Manaphy for three weeks, and <laughs> that that is a large part of it, because I, I've kept telling him to take Manaphy, because it is an amazing Pokemon. It, mm -hmm. Especially in draft He refused format. to take it. Yeah, and then that first week he brought it, it had three kills. Yeah, the first week he brought it, it had three kills, and I feel like that definitely lowered it down because it lowered his overall potential because he just didn't do as well because he didn't bring Manaphy. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, he has a relatively poor draft team. Uh, he first round picks Superior, which is at best a third round pick. See, but I am glad though he actually is playing really, really well with Superior. He is. He's playing well with the team he has, but the drafting he has is relatively poor. Yeah, I, I think I that's one of those things where it depends on like how you want to look at it, where if he drafts a bad team but can actually play with it really well, it, it matters <laughs> like where, where you want to put them. Because I actually, surprisingly, I actually have John at four. Really? Yeah, just because... He, uh, out of like the rest like out of that middle pack he's actually playing I think the most he's, he's had wins and he's the only one out of, I've seen out of like that middle pack that has like that bigger win where I feel like going in we actually all thought he might he would lose to Omari was it in um, last week or yeah. week four in week four uh, but he actually pulled out that win he actually pulled out a big 3-0 before we move off that real quick, I just want to talk about that. Um, Amari is one of those people where some weeks it's it's very random with him. Some weeks yeah. he has the best prep in the league, and he, you know, like against his most recent match with Mitch, and we were all, I think, fairly surprised to see that he pulled out that amazing, um, you know, Iron Head Z-move and just absolutely obliterated um, Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu. So we see things like that, and then we see weeks against, you know, John, where he brings literally the same exact team with the same exact set that he brought against me, and it does nothing. Yeah, and of just, course yeah. it does nothing, because it's not built to counter John. So, I mean, it, to me, it's it's kind of a lack of effort against people that he doesn't care about, and he, he really wants those yeah. big wins against uh, strong opponents, and almost... He's, he's almost like that Charizard from the early anime, where... Uh... <laughs> Where when it's against like those strong opponent opponents like that Magmar, he gets all fired up, but then when he thinks it's weaker, he just goes to sleep. Right. And ends up losing. Yeah. Yeah. So. I I actually yeah. So, uh, where do you have 
Where do you have? Uh... Uh, can I just interject to finish what I was uh, to finish something? Sure. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, for for me, the seven through four are super extremely close. There yeah, are like ve there's very little differentiating these guys, ever, the the old four. Yeah. So really, it's going to be just nitpicking here. Yeah. I think we're too yeah. on that. It, I mean, the standings. What, what is it? Uh, every single person in four through seven is three and two, right? Um, no, one's two and three. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm two and three. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's all pretty close, and uh, I'm pretty sure I think all of us have seven through four. They're all in the Moon Conference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like that that conference has just been absolutely nuts this year, where every every week they they just jump all around. Uh, this is actually this past week is actually the only week where there wasn't any changes in the Moon Conference and standings. Um. But it like most weeks you'll see some people jump up two spots and then someone else jump down two, like or everyone's moving around in that conference constantly. So it is really hard to judge on who who you think is doing better. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. So that was your se your seven was John right Tyler? So yes. Jay, who do you have at seven? I also had John at seven. You also um, John again. I'm gonna I'm gonna echo some of the points that Tyler talked about. Um, I think next to Ricky, he has the worst team in the league in terms yeah. of just the the mons that he drafted. Um, he hasn't done all too much through trades and free agency in order to improve that. Even though he has been pretty active in that, I think his pickups and his changes have been little to no effect. You know, really in in the uh, effectiveness of his team. He did uh, make that again, clutch Ambi Bomb pickup though. Because yep. Palm has been doing pretty well for him. Yeah, it has. I, I would agree with that. I think that's his one decent pickup. Uh, the Manaphy, he, he didn't bring Manaphy for three weeks, <laughs> and that that is the main reason. I mean, I was terrified when I was prepping for him, but then you know I have a five zero against him in that week three column, and there's really no reason for it. Manaphy definitely runs house on my team, and if yeah. he had brought it, I think we'd be, you know, I think he's a clear four like you put him at if he brings it, you know, those first three weeks. But yeah. so far, he hasn't. And he doesn't seem to like playing with it, feel comfortable playing with it. So I think we have to kind of factor that into his positioning. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, like, I, I'll just go over why I do have him at four. I do have him at four, like I was saying earlier, where uh, I feel like even though his team isn't that great, he has been, at least at least in the past few weeks, been pretty consistent with it. Um. And like you said, where he has that, I've seen like those glimpses of him being able to just take out those wins, like his win against Amari, um, and like with that man, if he like now that he is bringing it, he actually is on like a two-game win streak, and he th those mons which are questionable, like that Serp, that was his first pick, is actually sixth in the league in kills right now, so like he has been playing it in the past week. He actually could have gotten two more kills with it. Um, if he if he leaf stormed and I have him in the spot because we have seen those glimpses where he can actually become one of those top like elite players, uh, and it, it's one of those things where I have him there just because I haven't seen uh, the consistency I've seen with him in the past few weeks with the other players, you know. Mm. And yeah, like, um, that's that's where I went with it. Against Ricky, uh, I think we had talked about this uh, post match, but he. Uh, he had it instead of it. It wasn't timid. It was uh, I think it was modest, and uh, he that that really made a big difference for him because I, f I forget what it was out against it, but he got out sped in the middle of his sweep, and he kind of had to switch it up from there. And it easily could have been that 5-0 against Ricky, and yeah. you know that would have made a, a big difference and killed differential. We might be having a different conversation right now uh, had he done that, but until yeah, he I, I think it's one of those things where. I kind of have him there because I I have seen those glimpses where I know once they're fixed, he'll be doing a lot better. You see the potential, but he's not at that level yet, is what you think. Yeah. 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 He, he shows, uh, talking with him personally, he shows a lot of potential with his, he has very creative sets that can catch people by surprise. Yeah, like he ran, um, the, his Latios, I think, this week was, it's surprisingly because uh, Latios and Latios, this this season has um the soul do isn't banned uh because they did change the way they they designed it it's it's like a 
it's like a plate, but for both dragon and psychic type moves. And I think he's the only one who's utilized it. I think he used it once, though, but I, I, I have been surprised to just not see that used as an item this, this season much. Um, but Yeah, because two last points I want to make here. Okay, so yep. I think you guys remember when I was being annoying and going around and asking everybody, what do you what do you think? Where do you think everyone yeah. is in the standings? Um, the the average of all those numbers turns out to be that uh, our league, on average, thinks that John is the seventh best player. So I think that bodes pretty strong for my argument. Uh, on top of that, I just wanted to bring up strength of schedule. John, I think, pretty clearly has, has the easiest schedule in the league. Yeah. He's in a, he's in what we all consider to be a, a weaker conference, but even more so than that, his normally would normally be challenging exhibition matches are against two of the weakest players in the league. There's really no reason why he should even be doing as badly as he is right now, um, and that's why I have him at seventh. I mean, he could easily be fourth if he had just done several things differently throughout the first few weeks here. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I also have him there because, uh, like, one of his earlier losses is to Mitch, who we I'm sure we'll go over has actually fallen off for the past few weeks as well. Uh, but that was actually when Mitch was playing really, really well. Uh, so one of his losses, who oh, I, I saw when, at least when Mitch was playing well, I saw him as one of the top three players in the league. So like back then, uh, that loss, I feel like didn't crack down John as much as it would have is if he lost to Mitch like this week, you know, I, I completely agree with that. Actually. Yeah. I think he played very well that week, that first week. Yeah, so I was very for, surprised by that as well. He since we've actually gone over both the year sevens. Um, yeah. actually, you you were saying something, Tyler? Oh no, I was just saying that I agreed with you that that yeah. uh, that lo- that one zero loss to Mitch showed that he played super well. Yeah. So uh, since we've gone over both the year sevens, my sevens actually is Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Jay. Uh, but uh, I have you at seven just because uh, I haven't seen like that elite player that I know you have been where uh, last year you actually just made it into the playoffs but then you squeaked by and you actually came in second in, in like the final match so uh, I, I just haven't seen that yet this season I know the first half of your season is actually really really tough where um, you actually faced Amari Mitch and then you, know, you faced Amari Mitch week one and two when Mitch was playing really really well still and then uh, week four, you lost to Tyler, who uh, we'll get into later. Um, so, like your your schedule itself has been has been pretty pretty hard. Uh, but I, I just haven't seen you like utilize the 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 mons on your team that should really be doing a lot of work. Uh, like Lander, like Lando T is probably yeah. the biggest reason. <laughs> yeah. Where most most matchups, you'll actually see Lando T can wreck house on a team, uh, but for some reason, it actually is the worst mod in the league right now where it's been killed five times and has zero kills and with a mod like that it should have at least at least three kills in there somewhere uh, especially if you have brought it to every single match and I, I, I can see in the past few weeks you, you're doing a bit better with like Lele and um, Weavile are doing a lot better than they were in the beginning of the season um, but I haven't seen you utilize those mons that are monster threats on your team. That that's like why they're down there. Where even I have seen like uh, like John has utilized Serp on his team, and like John has um, it has played like a little bit trickier where he's gotten like those important kills on there. Uh, I I just haven't seen it much. It, it's coming around more recently with like I said the Weave on the Feeny, uh, but like with the Lando, I think is probably one of the bigger reasons. All right, so here uh, I'm not going to say anything about myself um, because I don't think it's, it's too fair to really you know analyze myself. But I will say that in my match against John, which we were briefly discussed earlier, uh, John would be remiss if we didn't bring this up. Uh, there was quite a bit of uh, tomfoolery, as it were, uh, in terms <laughs> of RNG just completely <laughs> fucking John. And you know, as much as I regret that, I, I'm happy I got the victory and everything. But I think. Do I think I would have won? Yes, still, I think I would have won like a 2-0, though, not a 5-0. I think yeah. that big victory doesn't really stand up because 
the reason why it was such a large victory is because I think Amoongus got like on sludge bombs got like three poisons or something. Yeah, that, that that is another yeah. reason why I did have John at four was because his loss with Mitch was a one zero, and it was against a very good player at least at that time. And his loss with you it was extremely haxy. So like both those losses are like tougher losses to deal with. Um, but I feel like they weren't as big of losses as like I, I don't know just some of the other ones too. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, uh, can I? So, where do you guys have Jay? Right? Uh, I was gonna segue into my sixth spot, which is Jay. I have Jay at six. Which is Jay? Yeah. Uh, so, for my reasonings, uh, just because of like his general super toughness of schedule, his two exhibition matches from the Sun Conference are against TK and myself, who are number one and two in the league, as well as he just hasn't been doing terribly well. Just mm-hmm. even in general, like against the. He may have had a tough schedule, but even then, there's that. But yeah, I, like, I, do... I, I have seen, like, in the past, at least with Jay, even, where he can do those upset matches and come come out ahead. Yeah. I just haven't seen, like, um, like I just haven't seen that yet, you know? But I believe, I, I the one of the reasons I put him above John is because Jay is, he does a lot, you do a lot of research, Jay. You do. And you also have the willingness to prep for, like, hours on end. We've done practice matches for... Like just several hours, getting ready, seeing what, (laughs) basically just doing, uh, just test runs to see if this, if like this type of set works better than this one, and that worked out pretty well last year, last season, and uh, I I hope to see it work uh, more this season. Hopefully, see you get in the playoffs. Yeah, I I am looking forward to you, Jay. I think, I think you have the potential to to really run that second half of the season, especially since you have faced each of the people in your conference once now, where you have, like, the feel of how they play. I feel like you are one of those players who, once you've played someone, you like you have that feel of how, how they're going to do things. I feel like with that, you, you, you're you the kind of player that does put in that extra prep, where you, you are one of those players where I can definitely see coming back and taking over and jumping into a good spot for, like, the playoffs. A better in the second half player. Yeah. I do want to make a point here that um, Tyler and I were discussing uh, earlier. Um, I kind of almost, when I'm team building, I don't want to give away too much of my secrets or you know the secret sauce or whatever, but <laughs> I do I do play Moneyball with my Pokemon. I really do. Um, I, I like to go in and look at the statistics, look at who I'm facing, and just look at raw data, raw numbers, because I'm not like everyone else in this league. I don't have that experience playing the games. I don't have that just pure amount of hours in the games. I don't necessarily understand a lot of the times why certain EVs are in certain places, and I'm getting better and better with that, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, playing Showdown for a year plus now, and I think I've put a lot of time to gain that skill, but I still do. I still do sometimes fall back on that kind of, you know, like I said, that money ball strategy, which sometimes it works. uh, It it works. It works, though. It's a strategy that does work, uh, because numbers never lie, but... So um, I, I just want to, it seems both of you guys, um, oh, wait, wait, TK, did you have me at six also or no? No, I, I had you at seven. Oh, right, right. So um, so I actually had me at six as well. Um, six as well. For most of the reasons you guys described, I'm not going to, you know, belabor it here, but um, I did want to point out that, again, uh, with the averages of what uh, everyone skill ranked uh, when I asked everybody uh, those averages, we have John at seven, Amari at six, average for the league, and very, very close me at five, but I think, um, honestly, I think it'd be more fair if that was flip-flopped, uh, Amari at five and me at six. So I think this is a good segue to kind of move into talking about more about Amari's team. Amari? Yeah. Now, those were taken after what, week four or week five? After week four. After week yeah. four, right, right. Okay. So, so I think Amari does get a jump with his defeat against Mitch there. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Nice. So we're gonna go into our. our... What is your sixth spot? Because I don't think you've said it yet. Is it Amari? Me? Yeah. Uh, my six is actually Mitch. Oh, okay. So I we should we should uh we should. Finish you said you want to go over Amari, right? Or finish our sixes? Okay. We should finish our so, sixes then go on to Amari, I think. Yeah, my six is actually Mitch, um, and it it kind of leads into the things I mentioned earlier with him, where in the beginning of the season he was playing really really well, um. But then as of, like, week three, when he lost to me, uh, I, I just haven't seen it with him as much. Like, even in that uh, week three match, uh, I didn't necessarily... 
some some of those things I feel like caused him to just not be on top of his game this past week with like Amari, um, and he, and he wouldn't necessarily be where he is now if in week four uh, he actually won because of a forfeit to uh, to Matt, um, where right now he in the standings is at the top of the Moon Conference, um, but we actually don't necessarily know where he would be if. It wasn't a forfeit. If which, I just want to interject real quick, without that, without that six zero, I mean, he drops to a kill differential of zero, which actually puts him in fourth place, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, or well, third place. Yeah, yeah, it dropped him below both John and Amari in, in the Moon it, Conference. Um, so, it it is something where, like, uh, especially since I think in week six, Matt does play Mitch, so I do want to see that. Um, and it was to Matt, who we all did put at uh, ninth in the league. So it's it's not like it wouldn't have been incredibly different. But if it if that comes out as like a three zero, that that does put him in, in less standings, in at least in my opinion. And uh, he hasn't just put in the effort like he had in the, the beginning of the season. And that that caused me to drop where he was. And if we were going off of where he was in I think week two, he'd definitely be a top four team. Yeah. Um. But it's just one of those things where I haven't seen it in the past few weeks, and uh, it's something I do want to see again. Um, just I think uh, just one more point I wanted to make about uh, Mitch here, because um, I'm not going to move into him till later. But um, he does have I, I have him uh, you know straight schedule in terms of in order. I think John clearly has the easiest schedule, but I think Mitch has the second easiest schedule, which is why it's especially disappointing that he's done so. Um, average I guess yeah. uh, in, in recent weeks I mean we really expect a lot more from him I would say in terms of pure skill he's probably the second best battler in this league and at least top three for in terms of prep he has a really good team and it's just not coming through for him yeah. I think uh, we that's, all know that's, that's, that's another that's thing too where his there. team is terrifying like his, his team is is probably at least top three teams in the league uh, depending on where you want to put him in there it could be top two top one um, but with the kind of team that he has, I feel like he shouldn't have the two losses he has. You yeah, know? Definitely. But, um, so that was number six for you, correct? That was my sixth, yeah. Do you guys want to go over Mitch first? Do you want to go over your five? Uh, well, my number five is Amari, so huh? I don't know if the Jameson's number six, number, uh... My five, my five is also Amari. Okay, so uh, we can start off with that. Uh, the reason that I have Amari in fifth is uh, he has a... He has a pretty okay. He has a pretty pretty okay draft team. Uh, he has some wacky prep sometimes that honestly surprises me that I didn't think anyone would run. Uh, his Z captain is uh, Sil Valley. While doing just some random battles with him, with some teams he had built, he ran like Z parting shot and used it as a pivot user, which would throw a lot of people off. And I'm yeah, it, 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 it is a very good Z captain to have. It's very strange, and that like just threw me off. And I'm someone that has like a lot of experience in Pokemon and a lot of game knowledge, and that one threw me off quite a bit. But I feel like it was still a waste of a Z captain on on that. Do you do you think bed. so? Yeah. Well, I think when he picked it as his Z captain, he thought it would change typing, uh, depending on what Z crystal it has, but it actually doesn't. Yeah, it's only what uh, memory it has. Which so it, it's I'm only what memory a picking a bad uh, Z assistant. Um, yeah. So it, it's one of those things where, uh, but he, he, he actually I think has used it once as his captain. He he did use Z parting shot in a match. Yeah, he did. And with a Z parting shot, it is great because it can help set up a sweeper, where it brings them in, puts them at full health, and lowers the attack and special attack on the the mon out by yeah. uh, by two. So like, it is really, really good to have. Um, so like, if if he could pair that up with like his uh, Zygarde ten percent, Zygarde fifty percent, uh, it, it could be really, really scary. Yeah. Um, but I, his the reason I have him in fifth is mostly because of his draft team. It's yeah. what I think. What I see is fairly predictable with like a, a sand team. Obviously, he can run different things, but. Mm-hmm. That's just weakening his team. He'd still have a much better chance with his drafting. The first week, uh, he got a surprise win off of Jay, because Jay would prep for a sand team, and he just got obliterated because he didn't prep for like any of the other mods he brought. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I think I think that's the problem too. Where, um, well, he is doing well. He has like you can see those glimpses where he preps really, really well. Like that yeah. past week with his one against Mitch, where the I think it was Z Iron Tail on his Zygarde. Yeah. That just absolutely obliterated Bulu, and like you see those glimpses where where he does really well. Um, but then there's those problems where, yeah. uh, like he got rid of his. Even though he has that sand team, his his team is pretty much all rock and steel types and ground types. Yeah, that's just a big uh, and, problem. Which is and his best why. sand sweeper, who was also his only rapid spinner in next control, he actually dropped. Yeah, so now he doesn't have a defogger unless Aerodactyl, but that'd be a waste of a defogger. Um, so like he lost his he hazard lost his hazard control. control yeah. And and his best sweeper in the sand. To pick up Terrakion, yeah. who, while yes, is a very good mon, it's just another one of those basic rock mons that he already has plenty of. Yeah, so that just like further decreased his, uh, like his versatility in it, because he yeah. also traded away. Uh, I forgot what mon he traded away, but he traded it for an Aerodactyl, which is just adding another. One yeah, he traded himself. away Heracross. Yeah, yeah, it was Her- it was a three way deal. His, like it was his main like surprise in week one. Heracross yeah. did okay. a lot of work. He named it yes, my guy. I, I completely agree. I and think then I think traded he's had, away his guy. He's had some of the worst trades in the league so far. It, it's almost like he's taken this all star team that we were all very fearful of and kind of knocked it down a few pegs. And that's the only reason, honestly, I have him under Mitch because you know Same. even after that massive upset, I think his just. I mean, then he he switches out Excadrill and it's like, well, okay, you just took out like one of the biggest threats in your team. Why? See, why? I, I do I do have him above Mitch because I had Mitch at six, but I have him below John because John isn't making those really really bad mistakes with his team. Like um, like John hasn't done a lot to his team, uh, but I feel like Amari is almost like crippling himself with some of the moves that he is doing. Yeah. And um, also, and he crippled himself with the draft. Just with his team's very, very one-dimensional. Yeah. One reason that I put Amari below Mitch is because his like refusal, from what I've seen, to use Magneton mm-hmm. in any of the matchups, despite it ran. It is a very good mod. Many teams. I just comparing it to a lot of the draft teams. It just runs through. It runs through Jay's team. Yeah. It can run through my team. Magneton is one of the better answers to any of the uh, any of the tapus too. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it's a versatile mod too. You you can you can throw air balloon on it so it doesn't get you know one shot by some of its bigger threats, and then you know th- then your team has to invest all this extra energy and momentum in taking out that air balloon, yeah. similar to sort of a heatran setup. And his refusal to bring that is what solidifies him as fifth place for me. Yeah, I agree. And I I think he is fifth, but then uh, that also does put him in the top half of the league. And I think he does belong in the top half because we have seen those glimpses of really good prep and like yes. those really good wins against Mitch. Um, but he also doesn't deserve to be in like that top four because yeah. of those mistakes he's made. Uh, so we can move on to your guys his number four, who's Mitch, right? With both yeah. of you. Yeah. So, uh, you can start this one, Jay. Sure. Here's the thing. Um, Tyler and I have both played with Mitch for a very long time the owner of the new into new moon rumblers and he's taught me pretty much everything i know about this game he is an excellent player and i think it would be a, a great disservice to rank him any lower than fourth even though i think everybody here knows he's not trying he really isn't and i it's, it's a little bit disappointing and i'm not really sure what the reasoning yeah. is i hope he picks it up if he makes the playoffs i hope he gets his enthusiasm back if he can get you know a strong win here but I mean, his prep work is not there. We all know he's busy, but the matter of the fact here is we're all very busy for the most part. Um, there are a few of us, like me and Tyler, who have absolutely nothing to do with our time, and so you know we're you know spending all of our time prepping. But Videos, the rest of us are all very busy and doing equally well. So there's really no excuse for him to be doing this bad. However, I do, I, I, I would have him at second in terms of raw skill, like I said. But yeah, I would as well. Yeah. Yeah, that, and and his team his team is there for him to be one of the top two teams in the league. And, th- and as long that's as he why... is still first in the Moon Conference, I really can't rank him any lower than fourth. Yeah. Even if, See, it, even if I, it I that's why I don't the, uh, have him at fourth is because because we don't know where he would be without the forfeit. Uh, like like we said, if we take that away, he's at like third in the conference. But that's right. assuming that he would lose to Matt. 
Well, not not assuming that he loses. Like even if he was a two zero, John or three zero, John's still ahead of him in the rankings. John has a positive five, I believe. Yes, he does. Yeah, so if you take even if Mitch had a five zero, there John and Mitch are tied, which I is why I actually Mitch have John have above him. Matt. That's my personal opinion. I feel like he would have six zero him because that was a match he was prepping for. Was Matt. And again, we're seeing this. We're seeing this massive shift from last year to this year, where we did have some issues with forfeiting last year. But again, Mitch completely undefeated in the regular season. Regular season yeah. winner outright got you know that keeper mod. Yeah, he even he even beat me last year. Like, played very well. Very smart sets. Uh, is you know a versatile builder can predict what his opponent is going to bring. Even you know. So I mean, we're really just talking about the effort here, which is again disappointing uh, in that respect. But yeah, I think he deserves the four spot even even without and the effort. And especially for the close match versus TK, who is at my he's TK is at my number one, and there was a very close match. I believe, TK, I believe you won two zero. You survived with Greninja yeah. and Amoswine. Yes. And against TK, that's a very impressive thing. Like, it was super close. This was probably going to be, like, one of the matches of the season, since that was an exhibition match, since they're both in separate conferences. I agree. And that 2-0, I don't think Amari could have pulled off a 2-0. I don't think John could have uh, pulled off a 2-0 versus you. So yeah. I, that's yeah. one of the other reasons I have him at fourth, is that I don't think anyone else See, in that conference would have been able to yeah. do that. Except for me yeah, that, that does make a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that, our, that does make uh, our, a lot of our sense. Our match last year was, was only a 1-0, and that was, I mean, that was, what, a speed tie, right? That was a speed tie yeah. between Victini Yeah, it was, it was a speed tie. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, last year in this, in this regular, in the play, playoffs, right? Yeah. Playoffs round two. Um, yeah, you, you beat me with the speed tie, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to make the move, because I was like, I'm going to lose the speed tie. I know it. <laughs> but it just goes to show how close all of this is near the top here yeah. with with our yeah. you know the better uh, coaches that we Definitely. have in this league. So is is that it for seven through four? You think? Uh, for so. the most part, there's just one other thing I wanted to say about Mitch is that uh, even if yep. his prep, he doesn't really care about prepping anymore. Matches, he still has like really good predictions. He he, uh, he helps me out with draft, not with drafting, with um with like scrimmaging for teams, and he basically can guess what they're bringing down to like five correct mods sometimes six so it, it, like his general knowledge and I feel like uh, knowing how people would run things is very high which is why I, I put him at fourth because even if he isn't trying he still has that like innate ability innate to ability. Guess what people are he's a competitive to person I don't mean to say when I say not trying I just I think we're, we're talking about really like in-depth prep work here yes he, uh, do, he does like uh, basic prep work now he doesn't he, he, he pretty much just builds the team and goes into the matches right yeah now yeah, yeah he, he isn't doing what like Jay and I are doing spending like hours doing scrimmages finding what would be like the theoretically best way doing calculations and stuff so, uh, I believe that's it for our top four. Cards. That's it. Or for yeah. sorry, seven through four. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm all set with my seven through four. I am as well. Jay, is there anything else you want so, to say? Um, no, no, I think we're good to move into the top three. Okay. So, what, what did you guys have at number three? Uh, I actually had myself at three. Really? Yeah. I think it's pretty humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I just have myself there because um. It's it's kind of the same reason why I had Mitch down was because the past few weeks I have been able to put in like the kind of prep and um, the kind of predictability that I normally do in my matches uh, and like you could see that cl very clearly in last week's match with Camisa yeah where um, you had like I two was matches of prep where yeah I, I my matches of prep were with Tyler twenty minutes before the match started where the prep matches didn't really mean anything at that point. They were just so I could see what someone else thought he'd bring. Um, it just—it's it, one of those things where it's you get you can get super super busy, uh, but to stay competitive, you you need to have uh, that that ability to be able to prep and that ability to be able to like play well. Where eighty percent of these matches are won in prep. Yeah, I agree. So prep is so I would say over half of. It's almost like yeah. a prep efficiency, like uh, using making the most of your time that you do have to prep. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's one of those things where um, my my prep hasn't been there. 
probably in the past two weeks because in week week four um i should have been able to i e- there were even some problems with that match where there were some predictions in that match i should have been able to come out with a 6-0 uh but i came out with a 5-0 because some things problems with prep and some things probably with the match and predictions but it was very evident in the match with Kamisa where uh you're you're not going to beat a kid like Kamisa unless you give 100 percent yeah uh with that match and uh it, it wasn't there at all so it's one of those things where i'm going off of like how well they're playing like now hmm. like especially like as of current like the past two weeks yeah rather than um, total. and yeah with, and the, with the way i've been playing and prepping the past two weeks i wouldn't put myself in the top two okay all right i think we did i think jay and i did ours uh general like more overall because more overall for my third i have uh kimisa in third place uh, it's super close i would say i'm I, i'd say kimisa and i are actually tied but mm-hmm. just because i won the head-to-head the first time i put myself in second um, yeah, that, that's how I was being you guys as well. Before before this draft, I didn't know Kamisa, so I don't know how he played, how good he was, and uh, after seeing like after watching his videos and seeing like the prep work he puts in, it's pretty terrifying. Especially with he has a super strong fire water grass core. He knows the game really well. Uh, he has a really great balance of walls and wall breakers, and uh, and he has it, the best it, setup mod in the league. Yeah, his prep game is really strong. So I would. That's that's the reason uh, that he, well, obviously he's top three for everyone. Yeah. And yeah, Jay, do you have him there too? I I did also have him at third, and my reason kind of behind that, it's um not so reflective of this you know very recent um your your week five uh, defeat against him. I don't think that a lot of that match really came down to um, raw skill. I think it came down to some really good prep on his part. There was, um, I really want to talk about that HP bug that he used against. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that was very good. That because, was awesome. Uh, we, we could all look at that. Like, uh, Celebi on any normal day is 100% counter to Keldeo. Um, but that but that HP bug w- was, was actually really awesome. So for context, for anyone that didn't see the match, uh, TK had thrown out Greninja, and uh, Kamisa had thrown out Keldeo. Now, uh, he thought he was going to Secret Sword, so he swapped into uh, Celebi. Instead, he HP bugged because it was a safe pick for both Greninja and Celebi. Because it would have and it's four done... times effective on Celebi. Yeah, because it would have done like maybe fifty percent damage to Greninja. And what would Greninja have done to him? And if he swapped out into Celebi, it was a one shot because it's four times. So that kind of I, think, I don't think it too. exactly one shot. It got him down to like two percent, but still, that damage is absolutely insane yeah. for a, a, a mon that normally would would counter a Keldeo. So that type of, that type of prep work is definitely deserving of top three easily. Yeah, yeah, and he but. and he, I have him at I have Kamisa personally at two. That's just because he he he's one of the two most consistent players I've seen in this in in this league. Where um, even since week one, he actually has the highest um, the highest streak. He, he's he's won since that loss to you and uh, to you Tyler in, in week mm-hmm. one. Um, and I feel like it's one of those things where each time, each week, you can see him even getting better each week. Yeah, definitely. Where, uh, like this current week, he was just on point with every single prediction. He was on point with all of his prep. I, I don't think the only thing I would have seen better in this week is if his Keldeo was Scarf, so he didn't have to worry about it um, uh, being outsped by like a Greninja. Yeah, definitely. And like. He only has like those tiny, tiny weak parts in prep, and with that, you're you're gonna win a lot of matches. And uh, that I I did have, I did have him at two because of that, um, but I don't know if that's because I wanted to move myself down to three, or whether because I thought, especially because of the head to head, I felt like Kamisa uh, should should have been ahead of me. I I just want to touch on one more thing before we move into the rest of the top three. Uh, Kamisa again, we're we're flashing back to what I talked about earlier here, but. 
that match against Ricky, he um, you know, we, we can say that he had all these these great prep and these great predictions and uh, all this all this great work against uh, against you, TK. But then he had exactly the opposite of whatever uh, good things he did against you. He did you know poor things against Ricky, yeah. and he, he still was able to pull out the victory there. But uh, that that to me was just in a lot of ways um, just not great battling, and uh, again not deserving of definitely top three, un- unquestionably top three, yeah. but not not that top two. Because there was also an incident in his match versus me, where I had a heat run out versus his Keldeo. What I had left was a paralyzed Talucha, so it was basically useless, and uh, a 90% Latios. So instead of going for the Secret Sword, which would have one shot the uh, heat ran, and um, I believe it didn't, would have done about 39 40% of the Latios' health, and he was specced. He decided to go for the hard prediction on Icy Wind uh, for the uh, Latios, rather than just going for the safe bet, which would have done quite a bit of damage. Yeah, and as we all know, you don't like to swap your mons. I very much like to sack my Pokemon, which is why the kill differential is not, despite being in my favor, is something I have to try to avoid doing, because I like clean swaps. And that type of prediction, uh, that type of play, is something... Is the other reason why he's in third? It's again with the same thing I said about Giga Drain earlier. It was just a misplay in battling. And I think that goes it comes down to knowing your opponent. It, but that was yeah. again that was a week one thing. Um, so I, I think can't judge him too harshly for that one, definitely. Right. So. But he's definitely super. All the I'd say the top three are super close as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I think that seven through four is very debatable. I think one through three is also very debatable. In two very separate brackets, but I agree, yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> because, um... So, since we talked about Kamisa and you, how you thought Kamisa was number two, um... I put myself in number two, just for the fact that TK, I think, is number one. But, uh, the only thing I honestly have to say about myself is that, uh, I have some returning mods from last season that I just know how to use, and that's why I picked them up. Like, my Crocodile was, uh, franchised from last season, because it did a lot of work. I picked up Rosary again, I picked up Cloister again. So it's just knowing how to use the specific mons that I have. See, I, you actually haven't brought Cloister to a single match yet, though. That's because he gets screwed by things. But <laughs> <laughs> And I, I think I think it is, too, where last year your team had to rely on it as, like, that setup sweeper, but I think this year you built a much better team. Yeah. The janitor. Um, so, so you don't you don't need to rely on it this year, as really really a job for anything because you you actually have the uh, uh, best probably debatably the best offensive pairing in the league right now in Magirna and in Crocodile. Completely agree. Um, Magirna is by far the best offensive mod in the league right now, um, and it it comes with I think in the, those first two weeks you weren't necessarily comfortable with it yet. Yeah. Um, but then, as a week three, you you instantly you instantly see you uh, getting getting a lot more comfortable with it, and it, it's just been absolutely taking lives uh, the past few weeks. And um, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more of it because um, it's only come to four games, and it has 12 kills already. Yeah. So it I'm averages to, three kills a game. I'm gonna have to thank you for that pickup. Uh, yeah. You basically telling me, yo, you should take Magirna. Yeah, uh, if I if I was smart, I would have offered the trade before the draft started. Because yeah. you, were, you were right after me in picks, right? Or a few yeah. after me? I was and, uh, after you. And I picked Lele, and um, you, you said you wanted Lele, and I said, nah, dude, gr- grab Magirna. It's better than Lele. I made the mistake of grabbing Lele before Magirna. Uh, so you're like, yeah, sure. And uh, I, I don't think you've... Uh, been on pause with it ever since then. It's it's been in the yeah. fast forward button. There are very few so. ones on my team that I would trade, even all the way I down do to throw in the viper. I do want to mention again here that uh, sort of like a unanimous or uh, anonymous, not unanimous, uh, league voting. We have you know uh, the league kind of saying as a consensus that uh, we do have uh, you Tyler at second and you TK at first uh, here with these averages. So I mean. Uh, Clearly, both of you guys are offensive powerhouses. Uh, have some great defensive mods to back that up too. Yeah, yeah, Tyler, you definitely like like you have that Magirna and the Crook pairing, which uh, is your team is just very very hard to prep for. Uh, I actually do have Tyler at one, 
um, because uh, that that early that early week when he did lose to me, I don't think you were comfortable with McGirna yet. Um, and if you were at that point, you might have been able to do even a bit better. Um, and it, it's it's one of those things where, like you said, your team all around is very very good. There's not really a mon on the team that you can say, oh, they're they're not going to come in handy at least once. They're, you're not going to use that mon, uh, especially with like those drops that you've done, um, like picking up Honchkrow, uh, just just because of your mascot. But uh, uh, pick, picking that up can definitely come in useful. Uh, uh, you're and you, like you said, you are just very very comfortable with your team, uh, which is why I do have you at one. Uh, like even even with my team personally, there's some mons on the team that I'm not comfortable with, and you can kind of see it. Yeah. Uh, with with like the Lele and like the Skarmory, who are very very good mons, but I've never used them before. Uh, so th- th- those are mons that I have to play around a li- little bit more with. Uh, well, you seem to have at least even settled into Magirna, so it seems like you're very comfortable with running any mon on your team in any which way and you, it's, your team's not predictable at all uh, to the point where each week you might be running like a shift gear Magirna and an air balloon heat trend but then the next week uh, I haven't seen it yet but I, I, I'm sure it'll happen at least once with a like a trick room Magirna uh, and and uh, like a like in the back row have like a moxie hunch crow like there, there's no way you're you're not going to like you bring a hundred percent to every single game, with your prep is always on point, yeah. and and there there hasn't been a game where I haven't seen you been able to predict really really well, uh, even even in your loss uh, to me. Like I said, I, I just feel like you weren't a hundred percent comfortable yet with uh, those threats you haven't necessarily used on your team, um, but it's it's not like you 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 didn't play well at all. The only mon that I'm not comfortable with on my team is Cradley, and that I took to spite you. <laughs> I hate that mon so much. I was not letting you get that. Yeah, my, my Cradley is, is good. This is another point I wanted to bring up here. Uh, because we have this 4 through 7 very competitive and this 1 through 3 very competitive, uh, however, both of these two sets that we were talking about here uh, uh, differently here. Um, the, with the top three, we have Sun Conference, so you guys play each other twice. Uh, Tyler, you're playing Kamisa this, this upcoming week in week six. Uh, you're going to have a chance to prove yourself and keep that first place slot, but you play TK again, and you're yeah, going to have a chance the week to after. get revenge, right? So, I mean, th- these next couple weeks, we're re- I think we're really going to see the standings kind of shape themselves out, and though this this post-week five video is, is a lot of it's very speculative. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of what we've talked about today come to fruition in the next uh, couple weeks even um and then that that four through seven slot again all all moon conference we all play each other twice chances for revenge and such so yeah i think it really is crazy that it did end up like breaking down that way that's a very uh, volatile with like uh, like the four through seven seven being uh in the same conference and like the one and one through three all being in the same conference as well it it is kind of weird that it played out like that way uh, just because you, you see, like, those bottom teams and those top teams in that Sun Conference, and then, like, that bulk in the middle is is really the Moon Conference. Um, so, in a way, they're very balanced, but also not at the same time. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, do you guys have any, any other things you want to go over through 1 through 3 at all? Or uh, Yeah, we didn't really go, because both Jay and I both have you, uh, TK, as 1, and I don't think we really said anything about you. Uh, yeah. So just just why I think you're first. Um, you easily have the most game knowledge out of anyone in this, out of everyone in this uh, draft. Uh, you are super effective at using lower tier mons, like your Cricketu and your Licky Licky Miss Magius. I'm pretty scared of as well, especially now that you picked up Regirock. That's gonna be a huge yeah. thing for you because you know how to run it. You can run those very low tier mons that I, not many other people can. Like Ricky doesn't can't really use his low tier mons, the uh, Gorgeist, the Drapion, the Float Soul. Um, Sin can't really use the Dedenne. Mitch, I can't see ever using like Meow Stick or Per Ugly, because they just don't fit too well. Um, 
I feel like that's definitely one of your strong points, is your ability to use any Pokemon on your team. Even if you're not completely comfortable with them, you know the sets to run. You know how you can... Uh, you're very good at prepping and doing um, just calculations. You calc like every small thing that you can to create mm -hmm. what is essentially a decision tree based on what, how, much you, how much you can do or how much you can do if you, if you swap out into something. I agree. That's a good point. Making making non-threatening things normally, if anybody else had a lot of the minds that you have, um, they would be useless. But yeah. you use them to your great advantage, and that's why it's very scary to build against you because you have this team where it's like, okay, well, here here are my threats against this team here, here, and here. But then you never know. You, you're TK. You can build around that. You yeah. can make it's it's almost like a like a trap door. You know, you you make something seem very non-threatening, like it's an easy in for you. For, for an opponent and then turn it into their, you know, biggest weakness. Yeah, because, like, looking at your team, the Tapu Lili is probably the most, like, one of the better mons. But then, like, Greninja, Mamoswine, Arcanine, Skarmory, Raikou, Heracross, these don't sound like top-tier picks for their respective regions, except for maybe Mamoswine because of the typing and the speed. But those are all terrifying once you say TK is running them. Because mm -hmm. I, like, if... Like, if Jay was running, like, Arcanine, or if Amari was running Arcanine, Skarmory, Mamoswine, I wouldn't be scared. It's because that you know how to run them pretty well, that you can use them effectively and use them as, like, a bait and switch. Yeah. That yeah, that, that, that does make a lot of sense. It, it's I think that's also one of those things that really comes out in the draft format, um, where I think a big focus of the format itself is... Being able to use those mons that normally don't get a lot of use, like uh, like you'd even see like a Gastrodon and like a Celebi, or even like like uh, even like even um, like even like you said like that Regirock or a Licky Licky. Yeah. Uh, but then getting those mons uh, to be those threats, like that Gastrodon, has been a really big wall. Um, and then, uh, like you said. Regirock is going to be a lot of fun now that it's on my team, um, but it's it's one of those things where, I like I've seen a lot from it with you as well, Tyler. Where uh, you you don't run those basic sets. It, any of the sets that happen shouldn't be those basic showdown sets that you'll see on, on like smog on. on 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 like on like a smog on tier. Yeah, it should be. Every most things that should be run should every team has to be that customized team to your opponent that week. Where uh, I think, at least uh, from what you guys have said, I've been at least the best one this this season utilizing every mon on their team. Yeah. Um, where I haven't even brought any of my OU mons all three together in a single match yet. Uh, where uh, you'll see a lot with like a with like a sin or like a. Uh, Especially like a Matt and like a John, or not even a John, but like a Matt, you'll see, a Ricky, you'll see, where their OU Mons come every single week. I'm going to have to say I'm guilty of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, even you, I guess, Tyler, right? Yeah. Mo most times you'll see a McGear and a Heatran or Latios. Uh, but even even still, sometimes you don't bring one of them. Um, Mammoth Wine has come for me every single week. Uh, but. It's it's one of those things where you look like the top three, even like the top three teams. They they look at uh, whatever team they're playing, and it's not okay. This mon is really good, so I'm going to use this mon. It's this mon has that really good matchup, so I'm going to use this mon. Or this mon doesn't take any damage from most of his offensive threats, so this has become my wall. This 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 match, like like you saw in our match, uh, Tyler and Bay. With um, my Arcanine was especially defensive wall for his big gear. You, you don't you don't see that a lot, and it, it's one of those things that comes out with those top three teams, where uh, those those things that you don't normally see end up being those bigger threats. Yeah, totally agree. So Jay, is there anything you wanted to say left? Because I did I think cut you off a little bit. No, no. I mean, um, you guys pretty much covered everything I wanted to say. Uh, there, there's a lot of skill towards the top here, and you guys are all very close. I actually, um, quite honestly, I have, I have Kamisa beating you, Tyler, in week six here. But again, you know, these are all going to be very close, very great matches to watch coming up, and I think we're all very excited to see how it turns out. Are you Jay, do, do you have that? predictions? 
I, I do have predictions. What do you want to hear? <laughs> uh, I, I, I just want to hear like uh, what you think how the rest of the season might go. He, he's predicted right, so... the entire season down to how many mons they have left. <laughs> right. so really? I, 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 I actually need have to final kill, kill, uh, kill the differential predictions for the end of the season, but I have uh, UTK finishing at 9-1. and one. Um, I have Tyler at eight and two, Kamisa at seven and three, uh, Ricky and Sin respectively at one and nine, both finishing with pretty uh, deep kill differentials. But uh, in, in order, you know, we're talking about because you guys play each other in the top three that will determine the standings for the playoffs. But we're talking about you know definitely going to be very close kill differentials going into that uh, in, in the playoffs. I can see anything happening between the three of you guys um, really. Uh, and then moving on to Moon, I have, you know, I still have Mitch at that 7-3 and three because I do really want to believe that the new Mel Rumblers are going to pull out some, you know, uh, strong wins against opponents that they definitely should be beating. Uh, like, like you know, uh, Mitch plays uh, me, Ricky, John, Amari, and Matt from here on out. Those should all be easy wins for him, quite frankly. Uh, but again, we don't know how that's necessarily going to play out because of Who, the who do you think that numbers. loss is going to be? Uh, against, for who? For Mitch, you said 7-3. and three. Who do, you, who do you think that loss will be? Oh, wait. It might have, um... The loss to you? Oh, I had him losing to, uh... John, actually. John. In, uh, week eight. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think uh... As, as we had kind of touched upon earlier, John has that, uh... 0-1 loss to Mitch in week one, where it was very close between the two teams. And I think that, uh... With the decline in effort on Mitch's side and the you know the increase in skill that we've seen that we've talked about with John, even though I still did rank him seventh, I, I think it's pretty apparent that he's a uh, still a big threat. So yeah. can definitely upset Mitch there, and that would you know definitely give John an in into the playoffs. Um, and then you know I actually me and Amari, it, it's going to come down to the wire. One of us, I, I think John does make the playoffs both because of his schedule and his skill. Um, but also, uh, you know, me and Amari, it, it's really just going to come down to these next, uh, you know, these next four weeks that are coming up, and we'll, we'll yeah. I mean, we'll see how it plays out. I, it's I'm excited to see you guys play again. You guys play again in this week, right? Week this six. Week, yep, tomorrow, yep. Yeah. I, th- I think that might be that really deciding factor between the two of you. Um, where I think if you can pull off the win, uh, you might be able to make the playoffs ahead of them. But uh, like, 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 uh, how our whole entire league works it really does come down to kill kill differential as well um between the two of you so even if you have beaten him um the the most recent time if he has more kills than you at the end of the week uh he'll be the one going to the playoffs so it's it's one of those things where it's how, how careful can you play as well besides um besides how good can you do you know yeah yeah so is, is there tyler you have any future predictions or anything for the season? Future predictions? Um, I just think my playoff... Pre- I don't... The playoff predictions are really hard because what I'm thinking is... Um, so, if how this works, if I understand it correctly, is the top two from the sun and the top two from the moon and the next two with the highest kill differentials, yeah? Yes. Okay, so my predictions are going to be obviously... Uh, you, I, I think it's going to be you and me for the, like, the secured playoff. Uh, in the Sun Conference, and then Kamisa obviously as the wild card, uh, being one of the uh, the two wild cards. And then mm-hmm. for the Moon Conference, I think it's going to be a toss. It's going to be very close, but I think Mitch might clutch it out. And then I feel like John is going to be the second secured spot. And then Amari mm-hmm. versus Jay is definitely going to be very decisive. Yeah, I, I think I think my I think choice Jay is really. Punch it out, though, yeah, sure. I really want to see this week six just in general, uh, with how I think it'll go, because um, I know Mitch is only Mitch is playing Matt, who we did put at ninth. Um, I want to see if he still puts in some effort for the match. Uh, if I if I see the effort from there, I, I could I could see him clutching it out. Um, and then with the Jay and Amari match, uh, I think whoever wins that will probably move on to the playoffs just because right now um, both of them actually do have a one-game win streak. Uh, so going into that match, whoever comes out on top of that will, will be somewhat on a roll with like a two-game win streak going. So I think I think they, they do have a chance to win there. Hmm. Uh, and I, I think John, out of that bottom conference, is the one I can definitely guarantee will really make the playoffs. 
Um, just because, like you said, that he has a bit weaker of a schedule, and uh, and I, I I I have only seen him really getting better through the season. Yeah. Um, so. And then and then uh, I think for the Sun, it's somewhat easier to predict where I think just those top three are going to make it in Tyler, TK, and Kamisa. So, you guys think that's it? Yeah, that's probably that's it. it. So, uh, can't wait to see the rest of the season. Do you think we'll do one of these again after Week 10, too, before the playoffs? I think so, yeah. I'd like to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it sounds and good. Hopefully then we'll head in the playoffs, some, playoff predictions yeah. and everything. Hopefully get some more commentaries from the moon side. Even yeah. If the people that, even if the battlers themselves aren't doing it, we can do a uh, just a mid-match. Yeah, I, I, do, I, do, I do like seeing these videos, especially I think it's awesome that the top three are doing those videos um, just because it's cool being able to see the kind of prep that goes into these matches, especially with those, those top players. Um, Through, through with what they're doing um, re- really really does help see the league and be, it helps analyzing it just in general as well yeah. um, for, for like this kind of thing it, like being able to see what their thought processes are going into each match does help putting them in different places uh, just in standings as well you see guys all set then you think? yep, yep. probably good for uh, a sign out yeah let's sign out uh, so Thanks again, you guys. Um, I'll see. I'll see you guys next time. Um, I think we've talked a lot today about the the way that these different teams match up against each other, um, and, and the way that things are going to kind of fall together. Um, like I said, I, I do want to see some more effort through these next few weeks from all the teams, and I think that it would be really nice to have, uh, you know, all of our best battlers come out and, and really show their stuff in the next few weeks, mm. uh, and that'll make it a lot more competitive going into the playoffs. So I hope that that happens. Uh, Yeah, that's about it. We'll catch you later. Peace.